hi guys you're welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here my name is nancy and you're also welcome in today's tutorial i'll be showing you how to make this drawstring drum suit so if this is what you're interested in kindly stay tuned the name of this fabric is called an ankara prince fabric and i made use of three yards for a plus size person you should make use of three and a half yards the name of this material here is called a crinoline and I made use of just one yard. So I'd be inserting this crinoline on the sleeve opening of this drum suit. First of all, I would like to make the top part of the drum suit before making the pants. So let's get started. So I folded this fabric into two and I'll be placing the measurements for the front piece of the top. The first step is to roll the starting line which serves as the shoulder line. The next line is the waistline. My waistline is 15 inches, but for the purpose of this drum suit, I'm going to be adding extra one and a half inches to that 15 inches, and that will make it 16 and a half. Now I went ahead to add half inches to an allowance to the M, which made it 17 inches altogether. So you should do the same to your own measurements. And the reason for this is because you don't want the half length of your jumpsuit to be too high now the next step is to mark a neck width of three inches for a plus size person you should mark four inches why the neck depth is one inch and i connected both points together to form a curved neckline after this i would place my tip from this side of the fold to mark half of my shoulder measurement which is seven inches and every other measurement that comes after this point i mark should be the sleeve length of the top I want the sleeve length to be 11 inches so i added extra half inch allowance to that which made it 11 and a half inches for the sleeve opening i'll be using my nipple points as a reference my nipple point is nine and a half inches so i added extra one and a half inches to that which made it 11 inches so i'll connect these two points together and this would be the sleeve opening now on the tip of the sleeve opening i would be making a new line here and this line would be called the bust line On the bust line, I marked my bust circumference divided by four and added extra three and a half inches to that because I don't want the jumpsuit to be too big. On the waist line, I placed my waist circumference divided by four and added three and a half inches by the side and connected the waist circumference to the bust circumference as shown. The next thing I'll do is to form a curve under the armhole so that when I'm ready to secure the sides, I'll conveniently secure the sides of the armhole properly. Now, the next thing I'll do is to add half inch to the top of the shoulder line for the shoulder joining. So I went ahead to trim out the neckline and the sides. Alright, so to get the back piece of this top, I folded this fabric here into two and placed the front piece directly on the folded fabric, making sure that there is a two inches distance from this fold, which would be serving as the zipper allowance on the center back of the top. All right, the next thing I did was to trace out the neckline. I went ahead to trim out the neckline and the sides of the top as well. To eliminate any excess fold at the center back of this top, I would mark one inch from this zipper allowance at the bottom and connect this point to the top of the zipper allowance as shown. And this would form a slant line. I'll go ahead to trim out the excess fabric on the side. Take note that the neckline for the front piece is a V neckline. So to do this, I placed just the front piece and used a straight ruler to connect the neck width of the front piece to the center fold of the waistline as shown and then root a V shape. So this is how the front piece of the top should be. And the back piece of the top should be this way. So the next thing I did was to place each pieces of the front piece directly on the back piece, right side of the fabric facing each other. 
Now I took this to the sewing machine to stitch the shoulder by half inch and also stitch this side of the other shoulder by half inch as well. After stitching the shoulders, you should have it looking this way. So the next step is to take the neck measurement. Starting from the center neckline of the back piece to the neckline of the front piece. So altogether, this is 23 inches. This simply means I would have to get a band length of 23 inches as well. And the width of this band is 6 inches. On fold, the width of the band would be 3 inches. Now I will go ahead to attach this folded band on the neckline of the front piece following the direction of my finger to the neckline of the back piece. And I will do the same by attaching the second band to the neckline of this other side as well. Once the band has been attached successfully, the next step is to place the center back of this top on each other. So you can then go ahead to pin the zipper allowance following the direction of the chalk that was marked initially for the zipper allowance on the center back. Alright, the next step is on how to attach the crinoline to the sleeve opening. So the width of this crinoline is 3 inches. To know the width of the band I would be using for the sleeve opening, I added one and a half inches to that three inches for the crinoline, line, which made it four and a half inches. So the width of this band here is four and a half inches. So I took this piece to the ironing board to fold one side of the edges in by half inch and making sure that the length of this band is also the same length as the sleeve opening. Now I flipped the top to the wrong side and placed the right side of the band directly on the wrong side making sure that the crinoline line is also placed directly on the edges as well now i took this to the sewing machine to stitch by half inch and i'll do the same for the other side of the sleeve after stitching you should spread out the sleeve band and then fold the seam allowance to this side facing the band take this to the sewing machine to Stitch directly on this side following the direction of the chalk and you should do the same for the other side of the second sleeve as well. After top stitching, I flipped the band to the right side of the fabric, took this to the sewing machine to stitch the edges following the direction of the chalk. So it was quite easier because I've used my iron to fold that particular edge already and I did the same for the second sleeve. The next step is to place the front piece of this top directly on the back piece. Now looking at it, you'd realize that the neckline at the bottom side is overlapped. Now you should pin this together, take this to your sewing machine to stitch the bottom of this lapping here. After you've done this, you should also take this top to the sewing machine to stitch the sides. After stitching the sides, you should notch the under armhole of this top so you can easily turn the top to the right side of the fabric and also iron the sides properly. Alright, this is the final outcome of the upper part of this outfit. So let's go ahead to make the bottom of this outfit. Alright, this pants is just like a high-waisted pants. The only difference is that the waist of this pants is attached to the waist of the upper part of this outfit so i'll be using this fabric to make the front piece of this pants i folded the fabric into two and the next step is to row the starting line which would be the waistline of this pants the next line would be my hip line which is nine inches from my waistline and my crotch depth line is 11 and a half inches now to get the tie line i would mark two inches below the crotch depth line to mark the full length of the pants i placed the tape on the waistline vertically downwards so the full length of this pants is 40 inches i added two inches to an allowance to the bottom which made it 
42 inches altogether. Alright, on the hip line, I would place my hip circumference divided by 4. And extend this point to the waistline, vertically upwards and vertically downwards to the crotch line. Now, to get the crotch curve, I placed my tape on the crotch line to take the measurements here. This is 9.5 inches, so I divided 9.5 inches by 4, and what I had left was about 2.3 inches. Now, I placed it from this point to mark 2.3 inches and connected it to this line to form a curve, which is called the crotch curve. To get the waist circumference of the pants, I brought the upper part of this outfit and took the measurement of the waist circumference. Here I have it to be 19 and a half inches. So I'm going to divide that 19 and a half inches by 2. And whatever I get, I'll place it from this line to mark it on the waistline. To connect the waist circumference to the hip circumference as shown. On the tie line, I would place my tie circumference divided by 2. Take note that the tie circumference is divided by 2. Now, I would connect this point to the tip of the crotch curve as shown. Now, I went ahead to place the tip on the tie circumference and I had 11 and a half inches. And since this is a straight pant, I would also be marking 11 and a half inches on the M circumference. Now, I will connect this point vertically upward. To the tie circumference as shown. For the sewing allowances of this front piece, I'll be adding one inch sewing allowance to the sides as shown. And before trimming out this pant, I added half inch sewing allowance to the top of the waistline. The next step is to get the back piece of the pants. I folded this fabric into two and placed the front piece of the pants directly on this folded fabric, making sure that the bottom of the pants is equal to the fabric and the top of the fabric of the back piece is higher than the front piece. So take note that the waistline for the back piece of the pants is really higher than the waistline for the front piece. To do this, I placed my tape from this line on this side to mark one and a half inches. For someone that has a bigger butt, you should mark about two inches. Alright, the next step is to mark the sewing allowance I'll be adding to the side of the hip line for the back piece, which is two inches. For the crotch allowance on the back piece, I added two and a half inches. For someone with a bigger board, you can increase it to 3 inches. Now I went ahead to connect these three points together. So you should make use of your curved ruler. I couldn't find mine at this point, so I had to use the freehand method. Alright, so since I had a 2 inches sewing allowance to the hip line, now I'll just go ahead to keep matching 2 inches sewing allowance to the side of the tie and continuously to the bottom of this pant. The next step is to connect this point to the side of the waistline as shown and I'll go ahead to print the sides of the back piece.
now i went ahead to mark the points i want my pocket to begin so from this side of the waistline vertically downwards i marked three inches i'll go ahead to notch this point i marked now i took the front piece to my sewing machine to stitch the crotch curve by half inch following the direction of my chalk now for the back piece because there's a zipper allowance at the center back i would place my tape from the waistline to mark seven inches now from this point i chalked i'll be making a stitch stitch following the direction of the chalk to the bottom of the crotch and this opening here would be the zipper allowance so after this has been done the next thing i'll do is to cut the pockets i folded this fabric into two and then i placed my tape here to mark a length of eight inches so this would be the pocket opening to which the hand would be inserted into now i assume that i've inserted my hand into it and i'll just go ahead to trace out the sides of the pocket in such a way that it's like two inches higher than my fingers so that the pockets will be deep enough to insert some items into it all right now i'll trim out the line that i traced and since this fabric was folded into two it means i have just two pieces of the pockets now i would place this on my fabric to cut out extra two pieces so that all together it becomes four pieces now to attach this pocket to the pants I brought the front piece of my pants here to so place one of the pockets on this point I notched and stitch by half inch and place the second pocket on the other side that was notched to stitch by half inch. Now for the back piece of this pant, I'd place the third pocket on this point that I notched here to stitch by half inch and to place the fourth pocket on this other side to stitch by half inch. Alright, so after that, I placed the back piece of the pants on the front piece of this pants. Here, you would notice that the back piece of the pants is wider than the front piece, which is normal. So, all you just have to do is to make sure that the sides are equal. Then, you just secure the sides following the direction of my chalk by half inch all through. Now, for this other side of the pants, you have to make sure that the side is equal. So, you just have to adjust the back piece to fit this side of the front piece and then you stitch the sides following the direction of the chalk. After the sides has been secured, the next step is to secure the M of this pant. So this is the wrong side of the fabric. I folded the M of this pant by two inches and folded the edges in by half inch took this to my sewing machine to make a split stitch in securing the edges following the direction of the chalk and i repeated the same sewing process for the other side of the leg opening all right so once this is done the next step is to make sure that the crotch line of both the front piece and the back piece aligns together you should pin this together take this to the sewing machine to stitch by half inch following the direction of the chalk now i turned the pants to the right side of the fabric so this is the final outcome of the pants now to attach the top to the pants you'd have to unpin the center back of the zipper allowance. After unpinning, I folded the blouse into two to notch the waistline of the center front. Now I'll be placing this point I notched directly on the center line of the front piece to pin together. After this, the joining on the side of the top would be placed directly on the joining on the side of the pants. So here you might notice that the waistline of the blouse is a bit wider than the pants. It doesn't matter. You can easily pleat that to fit in. But just make sure that all lines are joined together by aligning it together. Now on this other side, the joining on the side of the top would also be placed on the joining on the side of the pants as well and for any little excess you see here 
you should be able to pleat it a little so that's basically what i'm going to do i'll take this to my sewing machine to stitch the waistline by half inch all through so after joining the waistline i flipped the dress to the right side of the fabric and the next step is on how to make the drawstring now from the center waistline on the pants i marked three inches on this side and also marked three inches on this other side from this point i marked the three inches i placed my tape to start from that point so i can take the waist circumference from that point to the center back on this side so what i have here is 16 inches this simply means for the other side it's also be 16 inches so this is a piece i'll be using for the string casing the actual length i measured now was 16 inches on the waistline right well i just made this casing length to be 17 inches and i made the width of the casing to be 2 inches now i would fold one edge in by half inch and then place it directly on this point i chopped above the joining on the waistline now i took this to my sewing machine to make a straight stitch starting from this point following the direction of my chalk so i go to the center back of the waistline here i would also take the other casing and place it directly on top of this point i chalked on this other side above the joining to so stitch by half inch so i get to the center back as well after attaching the casing the next step is to fold this other edge of the casing in by half inch and cover the joining take this to the sewing machine to stitch on the edges of the other side of the casing following the direction of the chalk so after doing this you should do the same for the other side of the string casing After the casing is successfully attached, you should be able to insert your fingers into the casing on these sides. So now, the next step is to make the strings that will be inserted into the casing. The width of this piece is one and a half inches, while the length is my entire waist circumference, which is 26 inches plus extra 3 inches but if you want yours to be longer then you can just add more allowances to it all right so to secure this i folded the top of this piece in by half inch and folded both sides in by half inch and folded the edges on each other took this to my sewing machine to stitch the sides so i got to this end so you don't have to fold the end just this top is okay so you should also do the same for the other strings so the strings is ready this side of the string is well folded so let's keep that aside this other side is not folded i'm going to use my safety pin to clip it and then insert it into the casing until it comes out from the other side of the center back so it is out here i'll use a pin to hold that down now the next step is to also insert the second strings into the casing on this other side. And when the string got to the center back on this side, I used the pin to hold it down so it doesn't go inside the casing. Alright, the final step is to attach a zipper to the center back of this jumpsuit. Alright guys, so this is the final outcome of my jumpsuit. It came out really beautiful. I hope this tutorial was helpful. You should give it a try. And if you are new to my channel, please and please kindly subscribe to my channel. Like and share my tutorials.